All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day. Uh, let's get into our session. And before that, let's uh, pray. Uh, if anyone would like to pray, please go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. Thank you for this time of class. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Paul who's teaching us. And God, I pray that uh, you help us to learn the truths today. Help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it. And be fully convinced in the truth and to walk in the truth, Jesus. Everything that we learn when we go out as your ministers, as uh, someone who builds your kingdom, Jesus, God, I pray that we will apply the practical things that we are learning and we could be a blessing to people, Jesus. Fill us with your knowledge and wisdom. Holy Spirit, you guide us and good. give us a good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session. Give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. So last class, we talked about uh, quite a few things, right? We talked about the seven group, uh, the upward, inward, outward, and forward model. Uh, then we looked at also a few pointers on how to lead a good seven group. Uh, what are some of the aspects that are involved? And also, uh, uh, we looked at what do we do with our children? Right? Uh, children are going to be part of cell groups. Now, uh, you know, we ended last session talking about how, uh, you know, children can be part of the worship, praise and worship time. So that way they will watch and learn. And, and then they can probably be taken to another place, another room, or, uh, and then there could be a coordinator who can, uh, talk about either the same topic or a different topic that is uh, that can relate to the children. Uh, make them pray for people. Make it exciting. Uh, you know, uh, get children to you know be involved. Get them to preach. Get them to do the declaration. Uh, have them get started when they are small, right? Uh, so no longer paper and kind of crayons. Uh, teach them. Teach them the word, right? <clears throat> Okay, so we'll get into chapter five. And chapter five talks about the cell leader. Now, as cell leaders, or you talk about leadership, you talk about even you know being a leader, there are responsibilities, there are things that we must do, things that we must learn, unlearn. Uh, so let's look at a few of them, right? Uh, first one. Only committed members, now we're just going to bring all of it in line with APC here. Only committed members of APC can become cell group member leaders, right? Now, for example, uh, you know, if I want to, you know, point a new life group leader, you know, we identify a certain area in, in our city, say, okay, we need a life group leader there. Um, the first thing that I look for is obviously he's got he or she's got to be a member of the church, right? Or they should have been attending church for at least a minimum of three years, right? Uh, at least a minimum of three years. Uh, and then what we also do is we encourage life group leaders to go through the foundations course. So uh, we have a book called The Foundations, and this is basically you know simple topics like faith and praise and worship, the Holy Spirit and uh, uh, the sacraments of the church and uh, you know the, the the basic simple topics that we learn right so i encourage them to go through the entire book now whether they are 10 years in the lord whether they are 20 years in the lord it doesn't really matter right uh, they may know you know they may have all the nine gifts of the holy spirit wonderful they may be prophets wonderful they may be leading worship for the past 20 years wonderful we have to do this foundations first. Right? Uh, why? Because it is something that is going to help them, right? Uh, so so it, there's no, there's no, you know, okay, since you're 20 years in, in the Lord and you've been serving, preaching for 20 years, you don't have to do this. No, they have to do this, right? They go through the entire foundations course. All cell group leaders go through the uh send group uh, what we call the life group leaders training manual now we've got a training manual 
and a lot of these pointers are there in the training manual so for example you know tomorrow tomorrow uh, i have a training with a new life group leader and uh, and so i'm going to go over the entire training module right so i go over the module responsibilities what you must do what you must not do and then i open it up for questions if they have any questions they have anything additional thoughts they would like to share so this takes about uh, an hour or one and a half hours right so once we we train them we appoint them as leaders and then you know we continue to follow up right until that life group or the cell groups comes to a certain level uh, you know I, I i try to from the back right i just try to encourage them i, I say okay go on because it's very easy to get discouraged right you start a cell group you're excited and uh, you know if two people come sometimes they feel discouraged right? so just being there you know at the background just trying to help them encouraging them uh, and helping them to you know just build the life group uh, okay so let's let's look at this responsibilities of the cell group leader let me let me present the notes so that we get all on the same page Yes, yes, yeah. Responsibilities of the cell group leader. Everyone can see the projection, right? Okay. Now, once you're appointed as a cell group leader, what are certain responsibilities that you and I have? Right? Uh, <clears throat> number one, preparing for the cell meetings, that is the word study and the discussions. When a leader is unprepared, or when a speaker is unprepared, you can see it, right? Uh, you gotta be prepared. So the cell group leader must, so, so you know, we make, we make things convenient at APC, we make things convenient. So all the life group leader has to do is go to our website, go to ministries, go to sermon notes, download the sermon notes, Go down right at the below, at the bottom of the page, and you'll find LG study material, right? And, okay, what I'll do is I'll just finish these points, and I'll just show you one of our sermon notes so that you can uh, see it, right? Uh, and there is a couple of questions. It's a Sunday sermon. So now, those are only questions. So what must the cell group leader do, he or she? must at least listen to the sermon two, three times, uh, come up with uh, a proper understanding of the sermon, right? And then be prepared right? now uh, with the discussions, be prepared with questions that may come up. Now, for example, on faith, right? Uh, you know, we know most of the questions that may come up. Hey, you know, I've, I've had faith for over 10 years. I've been praying for healing. Nothing's happened. What should I do? Basically. Uh, common questions that come up. So, so be well prepared, right? And as a leader, when when people watch, uh, they they will they will look, they will be able to see through you, right? So, uh, so be well prepared for your cell meetings. Two, guide the discussions, right? Uh, now, what does it mean to guide? Right? Uh, you know, if you're going to a tourist destination, you have a guide. Now, the guide isn't talking the whole time right he's just saying okay when you get to a certain place he'll say okay this is what the place is you know this is what history says about this place or whatever is uh, you know unique to that place and then he keeps quiet right now guiding the discussion is basically you are making sure that the discussions are aligned with the theme or the topic of what is being discussed Right? And as I've mentioned it before as well, right? They'll see, people get opportunities to speak. Sometimes people don't want to speak. Sometimes people get opportunities to speak, they speak. And sometimes people get opportunities to speak, it's hard to stop them because they keep speaking, right? So as a leader, you must understand that, okay, these are people who are uh, 
people are different. So I need to make sure that I guide the discussions in the right way. Right. Thirdly, you are a leader and a mentor. Right. Set a godly example. Very important. Right. Set a godly example. Influence through your life. Right. Uh, when you set a godly example, people will watch and learn. Right. Uh, yeah. One of the things that, you know, I don't do this much anymore, but I remember doing this. I used to always do this. I used to keep telling myself, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Right? Especially when I'm upset, angry, or I'm a leader. And what happens? Uh, you're trying to tell yourself, hey, let me lead by example. Right? So even in your cell groups, set the godly example. Right? What is something? Let's take a few examples. How can you set as a leader? What are some of the godly examples that you can set? Anyone would like to share? What are simple godly examples that we can, you know, set as leaders? That when people watch it, they'll say, "Hey, well, I need to, be, I need to learn this, or I should be this way." Anyone would like to share? Maybe one or two points. maybe listening uh when uh the cell group members want to input some points listening to them well and trying to understand um uh, plus uh, maybe there might be situations where uh, uh you need to handle you know um if the members uh, could uh, you know in their conversations knowingly or unknowingly could offend you, uh, mm -hmm. so to um, handle it with grace. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, thank, you. thank you so much, Divya. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, you know, it's easy to take appreciation, right? Oh, brother, pastor, you have shared so well. Thank you for sharing the word, and thank you for you know ministering to me, and we feel good. What about if somebody comes and says, hey, uh, you know what you spoke about? Uh, I didn't understand a word of what you said, uh, one. And two, you were speaking totally in line with the, uh, you know, the example that you gave was not right. What would we do as leaders, right? Uh, how would we respond to those? Yeah, that's good. Anyone else would like to share thoughts? What do we set a godly example? Okay, some very common practical things that I can think of. Number one, start on time. Yes or no? Like imagine you say, okay, 7, 7 p.m. cell group, and you start at 7, 5. What happens? You start at 7, 5. The world is not going to end, that's for sure. But you're setting an example. You say seven o'clock, seven o'clock. Uh, and second example could be these are just very practical things, right? Uh, uh, you know, just being available to do the smallest of things in a cell group, right? Uh, you may be the cell group leader, but uh, just, you know, maybe arranging the chairs or washing the cups uh, after everyone's had tea influence through your life right set a godly example let people know that you know this is what you are you're not somebody on monday to friday and on saturday group day with somebody else no. disciple all the members in the in the cell group right minister to them now here's the best part about discipleship right it is we are people who have you know failures we go through difficulties challenges and as leaders and mentors right don't it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to let them know that hey i'm also learning right uh, but whatever i know i'm willing to impart to you right never come to a place especially in discipleship never come to a place of having the i know it all attitude you know what happens is people will see through that again Say, hey, this person is saying he knows it all. 
uh, but that's not what it is. Let them know that, hey, even you are learning, you are growing in the Lord, you are growing in the things of God, and uh, you know, you're doing your best to disciple and to help and support uh, others in the group, right? <clears throat> Fourthly, pray for your cell members. Pray for them uh, in your personal time. Pray for them, you know, usually after the cell group meeting, they go to come and say, hey, can you pray for me? These are the things that I'm going through. Pray with a burden. Don't just pray just because I have to pray. Have a burden in your heart. Okay. God, work in his life, work in her life. Minister to them. Uh, let them see the things of God in their life. As you, you pray with a fervor, pray with a burden. Follow up with individuals during the week. Now, here's the additional thing as cell group leaders. Now, you may have a Monday to Friday job, right? And uh, it could be a hectic job. Monday to Friday you're working, but Saturdays is your cell groups, right? So what you, as a leader, what you must do is during the week, emails, you can you can phone. Right now we have WhatsApp and all that, right? Just, just send them a message or if you can visit, do visit them, right? Uh, you, so for example, you have a cell group member and uh, all of a sudden on Wednesday, you get a call saying that, uh, you know, he's uh, down with, uh, you know, viral fever. This is an example, right? The person is down with viral fever. Now, uh, you can call on the phone and pray for healing, right? Now, don't say, we, we don't have to say, you know, I know most of us are not going to do this, but uh, we can't say, okay, today's Wednesday. You on Saturday, I will call you and pray for you. No, uh, no. One of the responsibilities of a cell group leader is to take that additional effort right uh, especially if it's first time people who are new they've come to life group you know just try and you know uh, <clears throat> try and visit them or try and get in touch with them right uh, next one is lead cell members in ministry and outreach as i said oh uh, as life groups as cell groups we we can uh, you know, go out, evangelize, reach out in, in, in places. Uh, and even as you do that, lead them, right? Now, many a times, it could be the first time somebody is holding a mic and you know, talking in public. Or it could be the first time somebody is, uh, you know, going out on an outreach, right? Or it could be the first time somebody is just uh, going to a children's home, right? And he or she may be weary, doesn't know what what to do. So lead the cell group members, right? um, lead them in ministry, teach them, give them opportunities. So you say, hey, uh, after we go for this outreach, uh, can you pray for maybe two or three children? What are you doing? You're giving them an opportunity for ministry, right? Or you can say, hey, uh, uh, can we sing three songs? So three of them from the cell group, you, you three sing the songs. Right? Uh, so you're leading them in a cell group. Right, you're leading them to minister to outreach. And that way, you're also encouraging the cell members to evangelize. Right now, uh, as I said, uh, it's it's sometimes the first step that matters. Right, uh, it could be that somebody in your cell group is very very shy and not willing to go out on outreach to evangelize, but with a little bit of encouragement and opportunity given he or she this this person can really step out and begin to know that hey you know evangelizing is not as what i thought it is now i thought it's going to be scary and i thought that you know um, i won't know what to say but i just i was able to speak so what are you doing you're you're all, not only encouraging the cell member but you're also enabling them to step into their gifts and skills and calling that God has for them, right? Encouraging them, developing them, right? Uh, uh, as I mentioned, I think, uh, you know, the first time, right, the first time, uh, uh, you know, I, I prayed in public was in a cell group, right? Uh, first time, I didn't mind attending, but I did, never used to pray. And I remember uh, initially after praying, I thought, 
I thought to myself, what did I even pray? Uh, but then as I kept doing it, I understood that, hey, nobody is judging me for what I prayed for. Nobody is pointing fingers. And I just prayed whatever I feel like praying. Everyone said amen and everyone were happy. Um, so I realized that, hey, I need to step out. And I remember also, it was in the cell group that, uh, you know, once I was praying and I got this word of knowledge uh, and I kept it to myself. I never wanted to share it in the cell group. Uh, and a couple of, you know, uh, cell groups later, I think it was a couple of months later, I got the word again. And I, I just said, hey, this is what I feel. And I remember that day, you know, this person said, yes, that's about me. And uh, this person was really ministered to. And I thought to myself, you know, uh, the, the, the place, the study group setting was a comfortable setting. It's a place where you're able to release your gifts, release the gifts of the spirit, right? Uh, uh, it's a very uh, safe environment, I would say. Right? So encourage your cell group members to flow in all of this. Now, this is our responsibility as leaders, right? Uh, well, never feel that, okay, only, I know that most of us don't, but never feel that, you know, as leaders, only I must be able to prophesy on the word of knowledge and flow in the gifts. Uh, no, right? Eventually, what is the bigger vision? All 12 of them must become leaders. So you begin to equip from day one develop cell members into leaders get them to start their own cells uh, now this this developing them into leaders may take time right uh, uh, it may not happen immediately it may take time it may take a year two years five years it's all right eventually we want to see them also start their own cell groups right and that's the model we are following right now at church right so uh, we have cell groups that are 10 years old, uh, and we asked the cell group leader, okay, appoint two cell group leaders within that cell group. Now, they may be just five minutes away, right? Uh, like geographically, they're just five or 10 minutes away. It's all right. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, what matters is they are able to lead their own life force. You can't put, a, uh, you can't put an eagle in a cage, right? That's not where it's meant to be. Uh, uh, and so develop them into leaders, get them to start their own cell, cell groups as well. Minister to the needs of the cell members. Right? Uh, okay, before I go ahead, when, you, when I say get them to start their cell groups, uh, that would involve a little bit of work from our end also, right? Uh, maybe encouraging them to, uh, you know, get started in a way like okay choose what day of the week you want to do it what kind of a cell group you want to have you want to have an only men only women family group what kind of a cell group right and uh, what is uh, you know help them with the agenda or and now since they've already been part of your cell group they may want to do it a little bit differently right so uh give them the freedom right but but you just be in the background to help them be be available if in case they need any help right? and then you release them uh ministering to cell members uh, that is uh counsel and support uh now this is going to happen right no matter what uh, as a cell group leader people will come and ask for counsel people will come and ask for prayer support they say hey can you pray for me these are the challenges i'm going through family needs you know and as as leaders they will people will come because they look up to you as a leader right uh, so be there for them minister to them pray for them now remember you and i cannot take the place of god right? uh, so somebody comes and says Please pray for me that I'll be healed of this physical illness. Pray for them in faith. You know, minister to them. Tell them, okay, I'm going to pray in faith. And you also join with me in faith. And we pray for healing, right? Uh, so, so, so be available. Now, there will be times, for example, you know, uh, I remember this one time, one of our cell, one cell group member called and said, told me, uh, you know, uh, young guy, young boy. He said, I'm feeling suicidal. And so I began to talk to him. And uh, 
after after a more after maybe a couple of months, as I was keep as I kept talking to him, uh, you know, it was very hard for him to overcome those uh, emotions, right? Uh, and so he kept saying, you know, even after two or three months, he was still feeling that way. Then I realized that he needs professional counseling. Right? Now I'm not a professional counselor. I can, you know, counsel a few things from God's word, pray for them, help them, give them certain ideas. But here it needed professional counseling. So immediately we connected him to Chrysalis Counseling, which is a, which are a team of uh, you know uh, professional counselors. And and so there will be times when you will have to do that, right? Uh, but otherwise, you know, pray for my job, pray for you know my marriage, pray that God blesses me with children. Uh, all of these things, we pray for them, right? Be there to support them, be there to encourage them, right? And especially when uh, you know when when there is bereavement uh, or there's a loss in the family. You know, the first place that they would normally go to is the life group leader, the cell group leader, because that is their first point of contact. And uh, and so be there for them. Uh, you know, I love what the Apostle Paul says: "To the weak, I was weak. Uh, to the to the to the rich, I was rich." Meaning, you you be there for them, understand them, right? empathize with them, pray for them. Uh, it's going to be a season, you know, when somebody loses a loved one for the next at least six months. But, you know, they need that additional care and support. So you've got to be there for them, right? Just, just uh, supporting them. Then impart the vision of the church to the uh, to the cell group members. Like right? uh, again, we talked about this, right? Uh, uh, even as you're doing what you're doing in the cell group. Uh, always put the vision of the church in foresight, right? So you say, hey, you know what? Uh, one of the things we, you can do is you, you know, say for example, you go one week, you go out on outreach, you come back, you say, you know what? We were able to be salt and light. Uh, what are you doing? You just imparting the vision of the church. We we're able to reach out, and this is what we did. We have somehow we are fulfilling the vision. Of the church and so you're imparting it into them right be accountable to your cell pastor and to your church so for example some of the things that we are going to start in the year 2024 is uh, right now we have 40 life groups and, and we're looking to uh, add to at least 15 life new life groups this year uh, and so one of the things we're going to do is we're going to bring in the hierarchy right so all this while i was coordinating the life groups i'll continue to coordinate it but practically if we have 50 or 55 life groups i may not be able to minister to all 55 life group leaders and many of them are husband and wife right so uh, uh and and so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring in area coordinators or zonal leaders right so each zone will have five area coordinators right and so five area LG leaders. And so they will report to the zonal leaders. The zonal leaders will report to the life group coordinator. Right. And and so we are being accountable to the uh to our leaders, right? Uh and of course, over time, what we also do is we try to meet quarterly. Now that we have different locations uh in Bangalore, we we try to meet, you know, at least quarterly or via zoom uh, just to catch up and to know that everything is going well right uh, so these are some of the responsibilities of the cell group uh, any questions any thoughts okay let's get into personal life and character again we talked about this be the model now when you talk about personal life and character, uh, that is what holds a leader strong, right? Now, character is what holds you. For example, you know, they're saying, you know, there's a saying, right? Gifts and skills take us up the ladder. But it's our character that can keep us there. 
it's very easy to go up a ladder. You, you join, uh, join a ministry, or you join as a ushering team. You become the ushering team leader. Then from there, you get into becoming a cell group leader, or you become a cell group member, cell group leader, associate leader, team leader, and and then from there on, you can get into becoming uh, you know the in, into the uh, pastoral team, and then you're there. Now, it's easy to go up the ladder because we got give, give skills, talents that God has placed in us, and we learn and grow in them. But it's our character that keeps us up there. Jesus was, you know, was a leader and he was able to do everything that he did because he led by example. Right? The cell leader must model being a disciple of Jesus to his members. Right? Be an example and leaders reproduce their own kind. Right. Uh, so personal life and character. If you and I, if, if, for example, if there's a leader who's always getting upset, right, even for the smallest of things, what is going to happen? Now, people in the cell group will notice it. Two things can happen. One, they're going to say, hey, you know, this leader is getting, you know, he's going to get upset. And they're just going to let it go. Or, they also will get upset because leaders reproduce, reproduce their own kind. If you got a leader who is always grumbling, you know, always you know, murmuring and grumbling and saying, you know what, or what's going to happen? It's going to run off onto the members. So lead by example, be a model. Uh, I'm not saying everything is going to work perfectly, right? You will have ups and downs, but Ask that question: What would Jesus do in this situation? Right. Uh, so, model being a disciple of Jesus. Read God's word. You know, stand by the principles that God has given us. Right. And and even as you lead in that, people will look at you as an example, and they will want to be or do things like how you do it. I remember talking to one wonderful leader, wonderful man of God. Uh, this was many years back. And uh, as I was talking to him, I asked him, uh, tell me something about your prayer life. Right? And he started saying, you know, uh, I, I wake up very early in the morning because I have small children. Uh, so I wake up very early in the morning and I like to spend time in prayer. So I asked him, how early? He said, sometimes I wake up at 4 a.m. Or, or sometimes at 3 a.m. I was like, wow, now, this man has got the kids, he's married, he's, he's a working professional, uh, and he's doing ministry. And, uh, and he wakes up so early, what a sacrifice. And that's why he's able to, you know, uh, do all of this, whatever he's doing, and can see the fruit in his ministry. So I remember at a very young age, I decided to myself, whatever I do, I must not compromise. On my prayer life because that is what is going to help me become more like jesus that is what is going to help me to stand and that's what's going to help me to be to make our ministry fruitful so you know i remember from then on I always have to have it wake up very early is it easy not always I, uh, but it's a joy because it's it's something that i i enjoy doing Right, uh, you know, Jesus, I'm sure wouldn't have been grumbling early morning. Oh, I have to go and pray. No, I'm going to speak to my father. Right, it was a joy for him. So, uh, and so when we do these things, uh, people will ask, people will learn, people will watch and learn. They will definitely, right? Uh, and so be ready. Now, don't make up stories. Right, if you make up stories, then uh, you know it's not going to be powerful. It's not going to minister to the other person. So when I talk about being an example or a model, uh, just share things in your life. Uh, and, and they may do it differently, but it can minister to them. Right? Secondly, 
have a passion for your cell group. The key to a powerful cell group ministry is a leader who passionately pursues the vision of the church as being the life of the local church. And that's why we call it life group, right? Cell groups are the life of the church. Right? And now imagine you go to a cell group and everyone are, you know, the leader is not passionate about it. He's just doing it because he has to. What will happen? It's, it's not going to, you know, it's better to close it down if you're not doing it passionately. But you've got to be passionate about it, right? So, for example, Wednesday comes, you must, for example, Saturday is your you know, cell group. By Wednesday, you must have listened to the sermon at least once. You must have at least, you know, uh, uh, made a few pointers on the sermon. Why are you doing all this? Because you want to do well. You're passionate about your people you're serving. You're passionate about the cell group. You're passionate about what God has called you. So Wednesday, okay. And then you, know, you should have spent time praying for your cell group members. And then by Friday, you should have listened to the sermon at least a second time. And then uh, Saturday morning, spend time in prayer, uh, just praying and asking God to move, ask the Holy Spirit to touch and minister to people. Uh, let there be healings, let there be deliverance, let new people come. You're passionate about the cell group. And then on the day of the cell group, on Saturday, right? Uh, uh, you may have had a terrible week from Monday to Friday at work, but don't bring work into this. Be passionate about what you're doing. It's okay. The week was hard, but life group is going to be good. And, you're, you know, you're, you're driving them uh, to come and to enjoy being in God's presence. Right? Says, so you see, look at passion and intense driving or overmastering conviction that demands action. Passion is an intense driving over overmastering conviction that demands action. Right? It's not just there, but it demands an action. Right? Thirdly, conviction. A cell that is full of life uh, is, is led by a leader driven with the conviction that life takes place. Life of the church takes place in the cells. Right? Be convicted. Now, what do I mean by being convicted? Meaning, now, you may have just 10 people in your cell group. Right? Now, don't feel, you know what, I think I'm better than this. I wish I could preach on Sunday morning in front of 500 people. Now, it's a good desire. It's a good passion. It's good to have that. Right? But be convicted that even these 12 or 10 people that I have are people who can be raised up as 10 great leaders for the kingdom of God. Be convicted that what you are doing in a cell group is something that is bearing fruit in the kingdom of God. Be convicted that as a leader, what I'm doing, God is watching over me and God will reward me. People may not reward me, but God will reward me. And so be convicted that the cell group is not just a group, but it is a place where people can really, you know, uh, serve be ministered to and experience the presence of God. And that conviction is there. People will see it. People will, you know, uh, catch that conviction or catch that vision. Right? If you are not convicted that a person can get healed, and you say, okay, why don't you come on Sunday to church and I'll pray for you? Because there, you know, uh, it's, it's when we pray in the church, it could be better. No, you'll be convicted that if God says that He'll do it, He will do it. Uh, so, the degree of that conviction determines the degree of passion the leader possesses. Right? If you start as a cell group leader, if you start a cell group, you must be convicted that one day we're going to have 12 new cell groups. That's a conviction. And we look at them and say, they may look like, you know, they, they're they just learning, you know, just the baby steps. They're still drinking the milk of God's word. But you're convicted that one day 
these 12 people will become good cell group leaders and maybe they can go on to become 12 pastors or 12 ministry leaders in the church. But when you're convicted, you hold on to that, right? Okay, so ministering to your cell members, chapter six. Right? We'll do as much as we can for another few minutes, yeah. So basic information for incoming cell members, right? Now, when cell members come in, uh, you know, most of them could be believers, but some of them are unsafe. Right? So, for example, somebody has come to church, say, hey, uh, I'm from a different faith, but I'd love, I've heard about life groups. I want to know what it is. Uh, is uh, I live in this area. Can I come? Right. And obviously, we can let's say, please, please do come and be part of life group. And when they come in, right, work with each one as appropriate according to the time they need. Meaning, there's a person who can come in with 10 years of experience, but there's a person who can come in with one year of experience as a believer. And there's a person who, who could come with absolutely no experience. You, you talk to them about Old Testament, they don't know what, they don't know who's Moses, they don't know who's, who's anybody else. They don't know nothing, right? So work with each one appropriately. Now, if you're talking to the person who's 10 years in the Lord, right? Uh, and you, you, you don't give them milk. Give them the solid word you, you, when you're ministering. You, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're going up to his level. But for example, you're talking to somebody who's one year in the Lord. Uh, we don't ridicule them. Say, no, you don't know what is Holy Spirit. You didn't know the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And obviously, we don't want to put them down. Work with them. Our goal is not to prove that we know better than them, but our goal is to make them leaders, right? to make them minister to them and raise them up as leaders. And uh, when somebody is new in the Lord, you've got to spend maybe, you know, or somebody who's just an unbeliever, there's a lot of time that needs to be spent with them, right? So once a person has moved on, right? So usually what happens is when a visitor comes in one week, two weeks, and then eventually, slowly, they will choose whether they'll continue or whether they will stay on. Now, there are times people will continue. There are times people will move on. That's all right. That's all right. Like, now, especially if you look at, you know, in church, this happened many times, right? Where uh, people will come to church on Sundays and uh, they were first time, oh, they say, oh, I love the church service. It's so wonderful. I enjoy the preaching. I enjoy the worship. I'll see you next Sunday. The next Sunday, they're not there. The following Sunday also, they're not there. And then you, they don't even see you. They don't even come after that. And you followed up, but sometimes they may say, you know, I'm going here, I'm doing this. You get to know that they don't want to come back. It's all right. Nothing wrong with the preacher, nothing wrong with the worship. Right? Now you'll have another set of people who will come on Sunday and say, you know, they may not say anything. They may just come, say, give their names, first time visitors, say, they may just go off. But they come every Sunday after that. Right? They're coming every Sunday. Right? So the same way, uh, you know, you you over time you give them opportunities. Right? Uh, and 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 uh, look at this. When a new person has moved from being a visitor to being committed, here's what the cell leader, cell leader needs to explain privately or in person to every new incoming cell member. Now, what is the vision of the church? Right? The history, the vision, and purpose of APC, our statement of faith, information about church membership, need to be committed to a cell group, learning about the future of APC, what APC 12 cell groups are. Learn about water baptism, that's if needed, water baptism, gifts of the spirit. Okay, so let me give you a class of example. One of the things that we do in church is when people are new to church, they come in, 
and they decide to keep coming in. That's right? so week after week they're coming. So every quarter, that's every four months, what we have is we have something called as the VIP banquet, right? So what basically what happens is after the Sunday service, we ask them those who are attending APC for the last four months, and you have decided to make APC as your home church, or you have decided to continue to, uh, you know, to worship at APC. Please stay back after Sunday service. So they stay back. What we do, we number one, first thing, we share the history of the church. We say, okay, 2001, APC has started. This is the vision. These are the different locations that are there. This is the purpose of the church. Now, they've been attending church, but they don't know all of this. right? So they need to know that, okay, what do we believe as a church? What is our statement of faith? Everything. We have a PPT. Everything is like one of our pastors or one of our volunteers will uh, you know, just uh, MC and they would say all of these things. Right. Okay. So some of you have been attending. If you'd like to be church members, we have a slip. Please write me your names, your, uh, your phone numbers, your address, and we'll add your details on the church website. So when we, sorry, on the church database. And uh, when we have it on our database, you will receive all our you know, in events, all details about events, your birthdays, your anniversaries, you'll receive your birthday cards, and all of these things will happen. Right? Then we tell them about life groups. So we have life groups. So these are the different life groups. For your life groups, these are the different locations. We encourage you to uh, tick off your closest area so that we can connect you to a life group. Life group is a place where you can grow in the things of God. Right Now, when they come to a life group, the life group leaders, now take it forward. Okay, what is APC 12? We teach them. Then we also have water baptism, gifts of the spirit. We have weekend schools. Uh, and we have books and everything that is there available. We make it uh, available for those who come to church. Right. So it's the same model that we can follow when you talk about the side group as well. People come and share these things. Now it could be a repeat. They may say, "I already know this." I say, okay, let's reiterate it so that we are all on the same page. That's wrong. Um, and that way, what you're doing is you're, you're setting the tone for the for the person. He's, he or she is new, uh, but what happens is they feel that they are part of this vision, and they feel that hey, I'm part of ABC. It doesn't matter. I'm just two weeks in, in in church, but if I decided to be part of this church or this cell group, I'm part of the vision. They've included me into this, uh, and they feel special. They feel uh, counted as well, right? and and so that way, you know, those who are new will feel comfortable. They'll be able to grow with things of God. Right? Okay. We'll stop here, and we'll continue from cell lessons uh, next week and try to cover as much as we can. Right? All right. Any questions? The questions okay all right so have a good weekend and see you on monday god bless